Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first look at the latest version of the J3 Cub from Hobby King. Now I've looked at previous versions of this particular model quite a while ago now. This one was very much the olive drab and I wasn't a big fan of the paint scheme. Uh, I really like this new much brighter paint scheme of this Swiss version. Now in terms of the specs, the specs are very similar to the original version, but there has been one major change and that is to the undercarriage. The landing gear is now an awful lot more robust, which is a really welcome change because that was one potentially weak point on previous versions. Wingspan of this model is 1400 millimeters or 55 inches. Length is 950 millimeters. So this is a nice size model, very good for line of sight, very easy to see exactly which way it's flying, particularly with these brighter colors. Flying weight is about 1.8 kilograms. Wing loading on this is nice and low, thanks to these lovely big wings. Uh, it's a 45 amp brushless ESC in here, and it's got an outrunner motor at the front. It's a 3648 700 kV motor, spinning quite a large prop. Four by nine gram servos, and the battery in this, you can either go with a 3S battery or a 4S battery. I'm flying it with a HV 3S battery from Hobby King. Uh, 3S is great for gentle flying around. With 4S, you get an awful lot more performance and that you can get some quite spirited flying on 4S. Now the J3 Cub, a particular a Cub of this size, is a great model to move onto if you have got your first couple of things like your Bixlers or AXNs and stuff out of your system and smash them to pieces. Or it's a great model if you just want something that looks a lot more scale. It does have the authentic colour scheme and it can do aerobatics like loops and rolls. And, but actually it is incredibly stable and very, very easy to fly. So not only is it quite rewarding for an established pilot, but it's also really forgiving for a new pilot as well. In terms of the building, everything is covered in the online manual. The thing that I really like about this is that there is this kind of quick guide sheet and I wish more manufacturers did this. This is a really smart idea from Hobby King. There's no point in giving us a manual that changes all the time that lots of people don't read anyway. It's very easy to get that from your tablet or phone. Uh, there's a link in the quick guide if you want to download it or it's in the files tab for the model itself on the Hobby King website. But this sheet gives you everything you need to know, the throws, the center of gravity, everything that you need is in here. Such a brilliant touch. Please, all those other manufacturers, if you're watching this video, do this. It just makes those of us who are relatively experienced builders get the key information we need to just set it up and have it flying well. So the build isn't particularly tricky. There's a little bit more gluing uh, putting it together than I would like. You have to put uh, quite a few things into the wings. Uh, the control surfaces aren't installed and things like the landing gear and struts all have to be installed as well as can you expect. Uh, nice that there isn't gluing to install the main wings or the horizontal or vertical stabilizers. All those are done with screws, including the tail dragger uh, rear wheel. So that's nice in case you ever break anything. It's easier to kind of take things off and potentially swap stuff with repairs. Uh, however, because this is a foam model, you know, a bead of hot glue will have it back together. Lots of people would cover this in something like laminate and that would make it a very, very robust model. The big thing about this, of course, is that rather than if you compare it with a similar flying model, something like the Tundra or the Grand Tundra from Hobby King, this has much more scale features, specifically the cockpit. Now, in the kit, you actually get a little mount for uh, a pan servo, a little nine grand servo. It's very easy to put a little FPV camera inside the canopy and have a real inside pilot's eye view if you want to do that as well, making it incredibly versatile, not only for line of sight flying where this larger shape in the air in these brighter colors is very easy to see, even at reasonably long ranges, but also FPV can be a huge amount of fun too. In terms of flying, the only thing you need to think about is the fact that because it has the smaller wheels, it won't run on anything but very smooth surfaces. You really want very smooth grass or you ideally want tarmac to be able to take this off from. It 
easily could handle the larger tundra wheels that you can get as optional things from places like Hobby King pop those on and then it could easily take off from these kind of grassy conditions. Now again, I'm running on 3S here and it's almost managing with the smaller wheels, but what we decided to do for this particular flight was to show you how easy it is to hand launch. And it is an absolute piece of cake, no problems at all. I hadn't trimmed this, uh, but as soon as it got in the air, I realized that you need a couple of millimeters of elevator up trim because the nose was sinking quite, quite, quite dramatically. In fact, I actually think I popped out one of the struts that supports the bottom of the wing uh, with one of the aggressive maneuvers trying to recover it while I was trying to get my, to my trim button. But it shows that those struts are not needed. They are more for show because the model continued to fly absolutely brilliantly. And it does fly brilliantly. The Cubs do. It is a high wing model. It's a really good setup. The center of gravity is spot on in the manual. Uh, you need the battery that I'm using right in the nose to get that center of gravity where it needs to be. And the throws are spot on as well. But it is just beautiful to fly and it looks fantastic in the air. So in summary, this Cub is a great model for line of sight flying. If you like line of sight and you've been looking for a model, uh, this version is one of the prettiest ones of it that Hobby King have done. It just looks absolutely fantastic. It's nice to see a model of this size, very stable and forgiving to fly, that would be a good third or fourth model potentially when you're coming into the hobby if you were interested in also doing stuff like adding that internal FPV ability. Brilliant improvements to the landing gear, uh, lots, lots stronger. We haven't managed to bend the ones on this yet, but again, you could add big Tundra Star wheels to make it to take off and land from very rough conditions if you don't have access to something that's super smooth. There are also some other little cute touches in here that shows that Hobby King are thinking about things. For example, this auxiliary flying JST lead from the power connection from the XT60. That is perfect to plug into an FPV video transmitter to power everything so that not only do you get the 3D kind of printed mount that you can put inside the canopy with the camera for the FPV stuff, you've also got a handy JST lead that you can plug the VTX into, which minimizes the amount of messing about to set it up. Build isn't too hard, a little less gluing would have been welcome. To have things like the control horns installed on the control surfaces, to have some of those additional pieces glued in would have been very welcome. I guess it's to stop those pieces causing damage to the other parts that's jostling around with, but this is really well packed. So please Hobby King in future, glue those things in because that is the thing that you're gonna wait the longest for when you put it together, is waiting for the damn glue to dry. Don't forget you will need a little bit of up elevator trim, just a little touch on about two millimeters. That in the setup that I had here, got it flying beautifully straight and level. There wasn't really any roll trim needed. Only a couple of things to be aware of with this. It's not easy to break down for transport. Uh, there, everything is bolted together with bolts. There's no quick release. You can kind of take the wings off, but you've got to undo at least uh, two or three bolts to get them off. Uh, so be prepared to either take it apart or make sure that you have a hatchback or a van in order to get it to the field. Don't forget you will need somewhere pretty flat uh, if you want to do rolling takeoffs from the ground. However, it does hand launch quite well, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. I just won't worry about where you're gonna land it. And make sure you glue the struts in well. As I said, mine have come uh, off occasionally where doing harder acrobatics. Uh, so do make sure that those little pieces under the wings are glued in really well. This is a lovely version of a very easy to fly, forgiving and very capable classic club style model. If you don't want all the scale detail, then the Tundra is another beautiful flying plane, very similar to this one. But with this, you can add the FPV camera into the supplied mount, and then you have the added extra experience of feeling like you're flying a full-sized cub. In summary, this gets the thumbs up from me. This is a recommended model if you're thinking of looking at a cub. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.